Hi everyone, my name is Diana and I'm a graduate student trainee at Canada's Michael Smith Genome Sciences Centre at BC Cancer in Vancouver. The title of my poster is Rampage, Rapid Antimicrobial Peptide Annotation and Gene Estimation. What are antimicrobial peptides? Antimicrobial peptides, or AMPs for short, are host defense peptides. These peptides are short, between 5 and 50 amino acids long, often positively charged, and amphipathic in nature. AMPs are produced by all organisms and act as a part of the innate immune system. AMPs are also classified into different families based on their secondary structures and disulfide bonds. An example of such a class by secondary structure is the alpha helix of this amphibian AMP shown on the left, called meganin 2 where the positive residues are shown in red. In addition to secondary structure, AMPs also have a conserved peptide structure of three parts, signal peptide, acidic propiece, and bioactive region. This whole sequence is referred to as an AMP precursor. The AMP is activated when the signal and propiece have been cleaved off at the arginine and lysine cleavage motifs, yielding only the mature peptide. AMPs have two main mechanisms of action. In direct killing, the AMP interacts with the cell membrane of the pathogen, either by perforating it and killing the cell, or translocating into the cell and inhibiting internal targets. In immune modulation, AMPs are used as chemoattractants to recruit other immune cells to a site of injury or infection. The motivation behind this project is the rise of antibiotic resistance. There is an antibiotic discovery void where the existing antibiotics are becoming less effective due to multidrug resistance, but the newly developed antibiotics are too similar to existing ones, which easily develop cross resistance. This problem requires new antimicrobial agents such as AMPs. Because AMPs co-evolved with the human microbiome, are part of the innate immune system, and have broad antimicrobial activity due to their nonspecific mechanisms, they do not confer resistance as easily as conventional antibiotics. In addition, AMPs can be mined from AMP-rich organisms such as amphibians and insects. So the objective is to develop and execute a scalable bioinformatics-based AMP discovery pipeline to mine for AMP sequences and publicly available genomic resources. This pipeline is Rampage, Rapid AMP Annotation and Gene Estimation. The input to this pipeline would be RNA-seq reads, in this case amphibian and insect datasets, and the output would be candidate AMP protein sequences. The candidate AMPs will be tested downstream for bioactivity, toxicity, and efficacy. The first step of Rampage is to pre-process the reads by removing sequencing adapters using FASTP. Next, the processed reads are assembled into transcripts using RNA Bloom. And in these transcripts, those lowly expressed are filtered out using quantification values from salmon. Then the nucleotide transcript sequences are translated into amino acid protein sequences using transdecoder. Next, to find AMPs in our protein sequences, homology search is conducted using Hammer, trained on AMP sequences from AMP databases APD3 and DADP. Then the signal and propeptide cleavage sites of these potential AMP precursors are predicted and cleaved using PROP. Then each cleaved sequence is run through Amplify, a deep learning model trained on amphibian AMPs, to determine the probability that the sequence is an AMP. So when a sequence scores an Amplify score greater or equal than 0.5, it is predicted to be an AMP. Any score lower is considered a non-AMP. So before proceeding to the next steps, our potential AMP sequences are filtered using three filters. Amplify score greater or equal to 0.9 for amphibians and 0.8 for insects. So this is because Amplify is trained exclusively on amphibian AMPs, so amphibians do tend to score higher. So the remaining two filters are based on two known AMP characteristics. AMPs are short and positively charged. So short and positively charged sequences with a high probability of being an AMP are then annotated to determine gene ontologies and protein domains using NTAP, as well as aligned to known AMPs using Exonerate. Lastly, Sable is used to predict secondary structures and solvent accessibility. 
and that's Rampage, which is implemented as a makefile. Rampage's code is public and can be found on its GitHub repository. The output of Rampage is a FASTA file with the sequences meeting our criteria and a TSV file complete with the annotations. So here are the results from Rampage. Along the y-axis you see the counts and along the x-axis the 84 data sets used arranged by common name classification. Here you can see the progression of data through Rampage from 53 million assembled transcripts to over a thousand candidate AMPs. The candidate AMPs have met our AMP filters, which I will discuss some more. So the three AMP filters are amplify score, length, and charge. These are the filters used to define our AMPs, and you can see here the data attrition of each filter. You can see here that length is the most restrictive filter, so if more AMPs were needed from the same 84 data sets, the length cutoff could be increased to 50 amino acids instead of the current 30. Here we see the peak memory usage and runtime of Rampage along the y-axis, and the data sets arranged from least to most reads on the x-axis. With data sets of less than 1 billion reads, results can be obtained in less than 20 hours with less than 200 gigabytes of memory. Data sets with greater than 1 billion reads can be subsampled to use less resources and less time. To summarize, Rampage was able to find 1,141 AMPs, of which only 139 were previously known. Rampage is a fast, robust bioinformatics pipeline that can discover known and novel putative AMPs in less than 20 hours. Thank you for viewing my poster presentation. If you liked this poster, please consider checking out some of the other posters by our lab.